Yo, what's good? It's Pico over here in Singapore. It is Tuesday night, and it's been an interesting day to say the least. So, first day back at work after four days off, which was amazing. I actually got a lot of rest and um, got to work on time and everything. It was kind of quiet because I got there by, um, on my own first and got to clean up and everything and set everything up for the the day. Um, worked on a calendar for marketing so I could figure out what ads need to go when and how much time lead time we need to give them so that we can you know fill out whatever holiday programs or whatever courses we have coming up so that was kind of interesting because like I said I didn't grow up in Singapore I don't know anything about the the examination timetables the way the terms are set up the way the holidays are set up none of that so everything's like huge learning curve for me but you know got that sorted out today so I have a better idea Um, uh, what else started working on ads again. Like I said before, I don't have the experience. I haven't lived through it. My parents aren't around to to be able to tell me, you know, what it was like. And even then, my mom, when she went through school, it's nothing like it was back then. It's a whole lot more stressful and kids are just like panicking everywhere. Um, So I basically depend on the kids that come through there who end up talking to me a little bit, talking to my boss a little bit, you know, just getting bits and pieces from everyone. Um, But more than anything else, I do want to talk to you about emotional balance today. So I feel like I've been a little off lately and I don't know why. I'm guessing it's the full moon in Gemini. I'm guessing it's, you know, Mercury retrograde. I mean, communications, the communication is supposed to be off, right? So I'm I'm going through it a little bit over here. Um, Got into a situation where I had um, a parent who was supposed to come drop off a check or whatever. Excuse me. And unfortunately, they were running late, but I didn't have any way of knowing where they were or who they were because the information that they were even on the way to drop a check off was from a third party. So the third party, you know, was kind of in and out of it, wasn't really communicating the best way possible. And I was like, well, where is this person? It's been a half an hour and you can get pretty much anywhere in Singapore within 20 minutes if you're in a car or a taxi. Uh, other than that, if you're going to take public transportation, of course, you're going to get, you know, take the long way around stuff and it's going to take you at least 30, 30 minutes to an hour. Um, but anyway, so I, I find myself losing my temper for little things for some reason. Um, there are some things that happened today that were a little bit bigger, um, and I think I had a right to be upset, but I, I'm not sure why I like I held on to the anger so much, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure. And I'm guessing part of it is the fact that I've been holding on to a lot of things that piss me off a lot, just kind of you know keeping it inside or whatever, because I don't have an outlet to to blow off steam. I don't have anywhere where I can like, you know, go ahead and like show my temper or even like in the situation, whatever the situation is, I can't, I don't see a way where I can just tell that person off and it be okay. You know what I mean? So I've been holding it in a little bit. Um, it kind of like bursts here and there with people I trust. Obviously that's not the way I want things to go down. I don't want it to kind of like spew over into people that don't deserve to be told off or anything um but i, f- I find that that's happening so I'm, I'm noticing it i'm not happy about it so the point is first you notice right it's half the battle and then after that you got to do something about it so what i'm trying to do right now is think about the situation rationally and for the most part i do um being a psych major i was taught to look at all sides of the situation put myself in that person's shoes try and you know understand what they might be going through all that stuff and i do that anyway it's it's natural for me it's it's an empath thing anyway, all right? But part of the thing that upsets me at the moment is that while I do this for everyone in every situation, I'm finding that I get more and more irritated that people don't do it for me. People don't consider me. People don't, you know, think about my welfare, my safety, my happiness, none of that. And it, it kind of irks my nerves a little bit. I mean, I think I have a right, but even then I'm not allowed to, like I said, show my temper, um, tell them off, put them in their place because a lot of these people are in desperate situations. And I get that. That's cool. I get that. But if you're in a desperate situation, here's my philosophy, right? If I was in a desperate situation and I was in in, in a place where someone was offering me a roof, offering me shelter, offering me help, something, whatever, I would make sure that I took into account everything that they might be going through because the last thing I want is to wear out my work. Welcome. Make sense? I don't want to wear out my welcome with anyone. I don't want to upset anyone. And for the most part here in Singapore, I find that the way I communicate is not the way they communicate. And as a result, there are miscommunications. Like, I'm the kind of person, if I see a change in your face, 
because I know who you are on a daily basis and suddenly there's like a change in your face, you're like in a darker mood, you seem upset, you don't seem like your usual bubbly self, I'm going to ask, yo, you okay? And I'm expecting you to say yes or no and if you say yes or no, I'm going to leave it alone, depending on what you say, obviously. If you say no, I'm going to dig further, I'm going to ask you, you know, what's going on? But for some reason in Singapore, apparently that's not the way things go down. I've been told off a couple of times with my uncles, you know, like that's I need to learn how to talk in Singapore. Well, from my observations, people in Singapore are quite rude and blunt. And they don't seem to think they're rude or blunt. And I don't appreciate that. But I mean, what can I do? They were raised one way and I was raised another. So for me, it's like Southern hospitality. It's like, you know, um, to serve and to love and to give and to, you know, just be there for people all the way around. Um, I was raised in a situation where you show respect, whether they're younger than you, older than you, CEO, garbage man, whatever, you show respect because you don't know what kind of struggles those people went through. You have no idea what, what kind of, you know, storm they've been asked to walk through or whatever. So you show respect. That's just the way I am. I show respect. If you do something kind, I'm going to say thank you. If you're going through some shit, I'm going to say, you know what, I'm sorry. And then I'm going to ask you, hey, can I help? Is there something I can do? Because, I mean, you never know. All they might need is a shoulder to lean on and somebody to vent to. That, that might be enough. That might be enough. But if I don't ask, I don't know. So I don't believe there's any such thing as a stupid question. The only stupid questions are the ones that go un unasked. Because then you look stupid because you didn't ask. You get my drift? Anyway, like I said, I need to find a little bit more emotional balance. And I think part of that is because I don't have an outlet. I don't have someone to talk to. I don't have someone who understands what I'm going through. Because... Currently, in this state of affairs, it's every man for himself. Everybody's looking out for themselves. Don't nobody give a shit. Don't nobody care where I am or what I'm doing. And that's cool. I mean, for the most part, I'm cool with that. I'm used to that. I'm used to being by myself. I don't have nobody to blame. I don't have nobody to, you know, to com complain about. It's just me and my baby. And if anything doesn't get done, well, shit, it's my fault because that's my job. Um had a maid for a little while and it was cool and everything to have an extra person in the house but at the end of the day I started resenting the fact that this woman was not doing what she should be doing and anytime I went to go tell her so she put up a big fight so it became one of those things where I couldn't even tell her what was wrong because I don't want the aggravation I don't want to fight you not on a daily basis it'd be different if I could tell you and you were willing to learn willing to adjust willing to change because after all I'm your employer although I did not treat you that way but some people aren't like that. So, I mean, what can I do? I I do the best I can. In the end, I just had to get rid of her because it wasn't worth feeling trapped in my own house by a person who was supposed to be my employee, but who decided she was going to, you know, take me for everything I had, basically. Anyway, um, so yeah, emotional stability, emotional balance. I, I need to find a way to get rid of some of this pent-up anger I have. Now, I will say this. I've been pretty good about holding my temper for a very long time. It, it's it been a long time since I really showed my temper. And even then, I mean, little bits and pieces of it do come out. And it does tend to scare people. And I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I have nowhere to put it. I don't know where to put it. I don't know how to get it out of my system either. I mean, if I had a punching bag, I'd probably, you know, work on that. But I don't at the moment. Um... Maybe maybe that's something I should invest in. I'm not sure. I don't have time for martial arts classes. I don't have time for, like, you know, gym-type situations. I do have an inclined bench and a bunch of weights in the house or whatever, and I do work out every so often. But even then, it doesn't fix the problems at hand. Now, when you deal with human beings, there will always be some kind of communication problem, some kind of a, a difference in the way we do things, um, a difficulty in accepting that they do things one way and you do things another. Um, it's always a difficult, it's always going to be like that, whether you're in hospitality, you're in retail, you're in, you know, law, um, engineering, construction, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. If there is a human being within, like, you know, three feet of you, there's going to be some kind of a situation at some point where you get into a misunderstanding. It's just the way it is. But how do you manage that? How do you, how do you keep objective? Now, part of my twin flame journey has been to get over the fact that I can't control everything. Another part of it has been patience to wait for things to unfold in their due time because obviously it's not in my time, it's in his time. It's in, in Source's time. I have to wait. The other piece that, that has been really difficult for me 
to grasp, let alone learn, has been the concept of detachment. Now, I've gotten into a debate with my mom before. Like She's like, no, just you know, don't expect and you won't be upset. Yeah, okay, fine. You can say that. that it's easy to say, but it's not easy to do. Unconditional love is without expectation. I get that. I really do. And for the most part, there are certain people that I do love unconditionally. I love my twin flame unconditionally. I love my daughter unconditionally. I love my brother and my mother unconditionally. I don't need anything from them. I just love them. I love them because I love them. That's it. Now, to be detached, though, sometimes is a little difficult. I feel like if I wasn't attached to the situation a little bit, I wouldn't... How do I even say this? I don't even... I can't even, like, explain it. It's like, all right, I I have a situation and somebody upsets me. And it's because I expect good things from them and they disappoint me that I get upset. But to be detached in that situation, does that mean I care less about them? Because if I didn't care, I wouldn't get upset, right? But caring, doesn't that give me an opportunity to help them correct their behavior too, if it's wrong behavior? If it's inconsiderate, if it's, if it's rude, if it's disrespectful, isn't that, is that, isn't that something I should have a right to? That's the debate I get into. So being detached, right? Like, how does that work then? Sure, okay, I don't have attachments, so I don't get upset. But then, if you do something wrong, and I don't get upset, do I have a right to tell you off? Do I have a right to correct you? Do I have a right to an opinion about whether it's right or wrong? It's like, these are the things I want to ask, but like, who do I ask? <laughs> People will think I'm crazy. I do want to be detached. I do want to be able to go through life and just you know accept things as they come and then keep on going, keep manifesting, keep co-creating like the perfect future or whatever and see things as they unfold. But I am attached. I am attached. I'm human. I'm attached. It matters to me how my daughter reacts to how people treat her. It matters to me that people see her differently and treat her funny. It pisses me off, to be quite frank. How do I not be attached in those situations? Let's say I was married still, okay? And my husband does something that upsets me. How do I remain unattached? Shouldn't I tell him it upsets me? Shouldn't shouldn't I tell him that what he's doing is wrong? That he's, he's hurting me? Like, shouldn't I give him a chance to change the behavior? If I was unattached, would I still be hurt? Would there be a point to me telling him all these things? Or should I just... I don't know. Somehow being unattached gives me the the sense of being like zombie-like. Like then I wouldn't have a need for any of my emotions. <laughs> and if I don't have emotions, then like, I mean, how do I create? How do I co-create? How do I manifest? Because isn't everything based in feeling? Isn't it the entire goal to align yourself with source? And if you're to align yourself with source, you should feel happy and joyful and in order to feel joyful, shouldn't you be, aren't you attached somehow to something? I don't know. To the feeling even? Yeah, super deep questions. I have no idea. I'm not a philosophy major. <laughs> anyway. Bottom line is, I think I'm stressed out a little bit. I think I've gotten to a point where I've been going, 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 going so long that the littlest things are starting to like piss me off because other things have happened and I've kept them to myself. I've kept them, you know, under my breath, basically. I've kept them to myself without saying anything to anyone. Anyway, I better go. I still have um, a lecture to listen to and I'm hoping that I can get that done shortly and then go to sleep. Building a business is not easy. Building it by yourself is harder. And I'm not knocking it. I'm happy. I'm glad. I'm super grateful that I'm building it by myself because one day when I have employees, I want to be able to tell them exactly what I what I went through and how I want things done because I understand the language. If I don't understand how to speak to a graphic designer because I've never touched the idea of graphic design, 
then how can I be sure that I'm getting the best person for the job? Eventually, it's all about communication and delegation. Once I have people around me, once I know what I want or how I want it, then I will be able to bring the right people around me. And once I have the right people around me, I'll be able to speak to them in a way that they would understand and know that I'm not bullshitting and I'm not like dumb enough for them to pull one over on me. And then they have to deliver. Those are the things I want. I want to be able to build a business where I can speak to them because I've tried it too. I can understand what kind of difficulties they might get into because of the way the um, the work is. What I want, if it's possible or not. If they're going to give me some ridiculous you know, explanation for how long it's going to take or a ridiculous quote for how much it's going to cost, like I would know better at that point. Doing all that, it takes its toll on you. It takes a lot of time, a lot of late nights, a lot of early mornings, a lot of sacrifice. And yeah, I'm willing to do it. I'm, I'm putting it in every day. I'm putting it in. But I guess at some point it does take its toll on me. And me being tired probably makes me a little more grumpy. And maybe that's part of the, the fact that I'm unbalanced at the moment. But like I said, knowing that, I, that I'm easily pushed off kilter is like a, a warning sign to me. They say that the measure of a man is in the size of the thing that upsets him. And if that's the case, then my measure is not all that great. I need to, to work on that a little bit. And it hasn't always been like this. It's just, I think it's just lately right now. And like I said, it might be the moon. It might be Mercury. I don't know. It might just be me. If I don't get this under control, I understand if I don't get this under control, if I don't find a way to let it out or find a way to rationalize or compartmentalize or whatever it is I need to do so that I can get a hold of my emotions and they don't get the best of me and I can give people the benefit of the doubt, I know that I'm going to lose a lot of relationships and that's not something I want to go through right now. I don't want to lose anyone. So with that being said, I feel like what the best thing I can do is make sure I get plenty of rest and make sure that I, I take a breath before I start to speak. Whether it's me counting to 10 or changing the subject or whatever it is, I don't know. I gotta find a way, man. All right, you guys. I better get to the next project that I have on my list and I will catch you all tomorrow, okay? Y'all take care. Bye.